Yeah. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, yes, as Christian uh, said, my presentation today will be related to uh, modeling of actually uh, crop water requirements in irrigation system planning. But before we start with this topic, just few, just few uh, things about basics uh, related to water cycling and actually to, to water balancing, in particular uh, uh, system, soil, plant, and atmosphere. So, from, from this point of view, <coughs> it is very important to to know and to introduce you with a few uh, basic things related to uh, water inputs in uh, water balancing. Uh, we will assume that we don't have still applied irrigation system. So the main inputs in these uh, small ecosystems are, of course, uh, precipitations. Uh, then we can also uh, discuss about surface inflow, subsurface inflow, and of course, of depending on uh, pedological conditions, about capillary rising uh, of water to the rhizosphere. On the other side, we also have several of the main outputs, water outputs in this water balancing. And the main of those outputs are evaporation and evaporation, or so-called transpiration, evapotranspiration. Then, of course, surface outflow, subsurface outflow, and of course, uh, percolation to, deep, to deeper uh, soil uh, soil profiles, but in the most of uh, actually uh, algae ecosystems, actually if we don't have applied irrigation system, then the main actually input is precipitation, and the main output is actually uh, transpiration or evapotranspiration. <clears throat> As you might remember from my uh, uh, before presentation. We said that, that actually, uh, from the total water uptake, over 95% of water is actually released to the atmosphere. So it's actually uh, uh, important and the main, actually, water output parameter. <clears throat> That's of great importance to know a bit more about evapotranspiration rate in, in this ecosystem. So, as I said, actually, water balance actually re represents actually a temporal difference in between of uh, water inputs and water outputs. And it can be uh, positive or negative. Uh, in a mathematical way, we can write it like here. <coughs> uh, with, particular, uh, with particular parameters. Uh, precipitation, irrigation, uh, capillary rising, and so on and so on. And the main outputs, as I said, evaporation, transpiration, and, and so on and so on. So, the main thing is that actually uh, water balance can be, as I said, positive or negative. And actually, difference is in, be in between of uh, precipitation or so-called effective precipitation and potential, potential evapotranspiration of certain crop is actually uh, represents the irrigation of or crop water requirements. So these two parameters, precipitation, uh, actually I have to stress the point with effective pre precipitation because you know not out of all precipitation will be useful for, for crop, for plant. One small part will, will evaporate to, to atmosphere, one will escape rhizosphere, and so on and so on. So we actually have to talk about effective precipitations. And of course, about potential <coughs> evapotranspirations. So the, these, two, these two parameters are of great importance in, in balancing of water in, 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 this, in this system. <coughs> Uh, when we talk about precipitation, is actually very relatively easy to, to, detect, to detect, easy to measure. Every 
today is every every meteorological station has actually in the basic equipment that that device which which actually easily detects and measures precipitation. Uh, but when we when we talk about evapor evapotranspiration or so-called potential evapor uh, evapotranspiration, it has to be known that actually potential evapotranspiration is actually achieve under well water rhizosphere uh, whereas in other cases we we talk about actual evapotranspiration <clears throat> so few things before we, we start with modeling i i will just uh, say a few things about uh, different two different approaches related to evapotranspiration measurements methods and techniques, and after that about uh, certain evapotranspiration uh, models, which actually uh, are able to model to predict evapotranspiration. So, when we are talking about a measurement of evapotranspiration, then, then we can actually discuss about few few categories of, uh, uh, of this approach. For instance, we can go about the water budget measurements, about water vapor transfer measurements, then measurement me measurement of certain components of evapotranspiration, and of course about large scale large scale measurements. Just briefly, shortly about particular of, of them. For instance, one of the most simplest actually uh, uh, method for detect evapotranspiration is so-called uh, fun evaporation or class A fun evaporation method, which actually is relatively simple in, uh, in, <coughs> in uh, composed of, let's say, a uh, simple uh, uh, pan filled with water and certain other things which actually uh, over time uh, um, uh, measure evaporation from this pan and with certain coefficient you can relate uh, this water losses with evapotranspiration from a particular area. Also, one of the most advanced actually technique is so-called Ericorian's technique, which actually calculates evapotranspiration as 20 to 60 minute time average from the correlation coefficient between fluctuation in vertical wind speed and atmospheric humidity, uh, measured at certain frequency at certain location. Then, of course, uh, we got so-called subflow method, which actually measures measures uh, rate of uh, subflow in trunk, uh, branches, or roots. Uh, 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 also, also for instance, this might be uh, interesting for protected uh, environments like this glass house, greenhouse, or road chamber, for instance, uh, it's possible to apply uh, so-called water balance method. Uh, one, one example actually, where, where is actually uh, this system is actually closed and in the difference in between of actually percolation and uh, uh, total water uh, supply gives, gives to us actually evapotranspiration rate or uh, rate of particular tomato plants. Uh, some of examples with this uh, uh, from this uh, study is actually good actually reg 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 regression lines associated uh, with asso associated uh, statistical parameters between measure transpiration on particular uh, hydroponical uh, substrate and predicted by uh, one equation uh, that will be uh, discussed later on so it's also possible to, to use uh, in this, in this method. Uh, then, of course, we got, uh, let's say, uh, one of the most uh, uh, precise uh, uh, method for uh, evapotranspiration measurement, so-called uh, lismetic uh, uh, measurement. Uh, LIS methods are, as you might know, can be uh, with uh, certain properties so-called zero ten tension or, or tension uh, lease methods. But actually, the, the main thing is actually the particular 
uh, will you of soil uh, cropped with certain plants is actually placed on one uh, scale, very precise scale, and over the time, every, in, total, every water input and output is actually uh, regist uh, registered by, by that scale. And of course, with other facilities for sampling of, of percolation and so on, it's possible also to, to take uh, uh, percolates for chemical analysis. Uh, uh, so it's actually very useful approach for evapotranspiration measurement in field conditions, in, in uh, of course, uh, different uh, other climatic conditions, uh, but depending on the, on the equipment, it's actually uh, uh, that method uh, has also some advantages and disadvantages. And just very briefly, uh, uh, there are also other approaches, for instance, like uh, large scale me measurements, uh, remote sensing uh, 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 measurements, and uh, uh, also using uh, certain uh, uh, measurement by leader, uh, to, which can uh, help us to calculate evapotranspiration uh, uh, from certain from certain areas. So, in short, what would be pros and cons? of this approach, uh, which means um, uh, measurement of certain evapotranspiration. We can say a few, we can conclude a few things. So actually, uh, this approach can be time consuming, as you can see. It can, it can take long period that you obtained evapotranspiration rate from certain field uh, you have to wait to be uh, to be uh, uh, also to have certain equipment. So it means that this approach can be relatively uh, expensive. Uh, and of course, uh, some approaches require uh, expert supervision. But on the other side, this is actually a highly accurate approach because you, by uh, lismet measurement, you can. Uh, obtain very very precise uh, losses of water and actually you can do that with different almost all crops and it's appreciable in all let's say agroecological conditions on the other side another approach is to model evapotranspiration rate for certain for certain crops based on what based on different meteorological pedological and other parameters for instance, currently there is about hundred of different approaches, the methods which actually calculate, predict evapotranspiration with certain with certain accuracy. And uh, uh, depending on certain number of of uh, particular uh, parameters, air temperature, solar radiation, wind, uh, humidity, air humidity, and so on and so on. Uh, and some of them are very uh, successful in certain conditions, some are not such uh, successful. But actually, uh, important thing is that actually FAO, Perma Monti method, 1990, was accepted as a reference standard method for, for calculation of so-called reference inspiration. Here you can see uh, it's a mathematical expression which is quite, let's say, difficult. Uh, 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 and the important is to, to remember that actually this method is very appreciable for different agroecological conditions. And based on certain parameters, it, 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 it uh, method actually very, very successfully uh, uh, calculate reference evapotranspiration. We will see why is important reference evapotranspiration and let's try to define that term. So actually, reference evapotranspiration is a hypo hypothetical crop with an assumed height of uh, 12 centimeters with a surface resistance of 70 uh, second per meter and albedo of 0 0.23. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, which actually uh, closely reassembling the evapotranspiration from extensive uh, green grass of uni uniform height, but which has to be actively growing and without water stress. I mean, without nutrient deficiency and without water stress or water deficiency. Uh, so, based on certain number of uh, of uh, meteorological parameters, uh, FAO panel motif methods actually very very accurately uh, mm, uh, calculates evapotranspiration rate of reference crop. Why is that important? It is important because based on the evapotranspiration of uh, reference crop and so-called crop, crop coefficient of certain crop, you can easily uh, calculate or estimate crop evapotranspiration or crop water requirements. Actually, this is the crucial moment of my today's presentation. So, from this relation, you can easily, but with, <laughs> with caution, with caution, I would say, you can re relatively easily, relatively quickly uh, calculate, estimate with certain accuracy, of course, uh, crop evapotranspiration or crop water requirements or another thing, irrigation requirements for particular crop species. Here you can see relations in between of uh, those uh, two curves, evapotranspiration of certain crop, which is actually here uh, corn, and reference evapotranspiration curve. And ratio of those two curves give, give us actually crop coefficient or crop corn, uh, corn coefficient. You can see at the beginning of, of cultivation, actually crop coefficient is below one. It grows and at the, or let's say, uh, mid of season, which is it, it, uh, crop coefficient is here above around one. And after that, with the ending of growing season, it goes down and it's below one. one. So, very important and uh, critical moment is actually uh, how we can get uh, 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 correct crop coefficient. Because you saw that we can calculate evapor reference evapotranspiration relatively easily on certain, uh, on certain climatic data. But what to do uh, with crop coefficient, how to obtain accurate crop, crop, crop coefficient. Actually, this was actually mm, one of the big uh, problems in my professional career. So let's see what is important from that point of view. Uh, so uh, we said actually that reference evapotranspiration is actually evapotranspiration of uh, green grassland, let's say. Uh, with certain with certain uh, assumed uh, assumed uh, parameters like is uh, uh, grass cut it on twelve centimeters with, with surface resistance of seventy uh, albedo and so on and so on. So it means that evap crop evapotranspiration or uh, reference evapotranspiration and crop coefficient actually should be should be detected under the same optimal conditions so at the same time when you are uh, when you are at the field measuring uh, reference evapotranspiration to obtain accurate crop coefficient of particular crop you would need to to do uh, uh, under the same condition with uh, other with other crops uh, but also very important is to know that actually crop coefficient depends on certain cultivar, genotype, uh, rootstock, uh, agri-ecosystem agri uh, characteristic, and so on and so on. And in doing the job that we uh, overtake uh, data from, I don't know, other 
uh, sources from other uh, lit literature, we we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful because actually, in my professional career, most of most of uh, uh, crop coefficient data, I I was overtaken from from uh, foreign foreign uh, literature, from foreign studies, and so on and so on. But uh, it has to be known that actually it's very depend uh, that parameter very depends on as I said in certain genotypes for instance let's see only with corn with corn you you have uh, early growing uh, hip hybrids uh, late growing hybrids then uh, sweet corn and so on and so on and everything is almost under the same term corn yeah which can be very 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 uh, uh, <coughs> So a person has to be very careful in, in, in handling with, with, that, with that data. So what is uh, good to know? It's good to know that actually this uh, approach was implemented in, over time in, in certain uh, software uh, interfaces. And it's relatively easy to, to handle with, with such softwares. And for today, I was I was prepared my presentation in, in modeling in, in CropWatt program, which is actually developed uh, 1991 by, by, by Martin Smith, expert, uh, FAO expert. And actually, over the time, CropWatt uh, was changed a lot. And recently, actually, uh, was released a uh, uh, version for uh, Windows uh, Windows interface, but I my today's presentation is is, is made in, in older interface, but actually there is no there is no uh, final results are actually the same. Uh, either they 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 done in, in older version or in new version. So, uh, also you will see other, another possibilities uh, for, uh, for this uh, interface, what, what is actually possible to do inside of, inside of it. So, let's say next, next uh, my next, uh, uh, the rest of my presentation will be related actually uh, to this topic, to crop water requirements, modeling in crop water interface, and better water use efficiency in intensive watermelon crop uh, production. So, uh, at first, we have to decide for which uh, particular uh, area, for which particular agri ecosystem we will do modern, our model. I was choose actually. Uh, one area in Mediterranean region of Croatia, in uh, Neretva River Valley, in Neretva River Valley, where is actually a uh, watermelon production very often. Actually, it's it's uh, one of the main uh, crop uh, in that area. So, what we need to uh, to analyze, and what we need data input for our model. At first, we need uh, certain uh, climatic parameters. For, let's say, a recent period uh, in the past 20 to 30 years. Uh, here you can see actually, uh, actually uh, uh, short uh, present of uh, uh, actually some of the most important uh, some of the most important uh, uh, water balance, balance parameters in Eretva River Valley, valley for uh, the period 1981 to, 90, to 2005. For instance, let's say what, uh, how, how is actually water balance in, in, this, in this area. For instance, uh, let's have a look reference evapotranspiration for this, for this area. You can see that the total reference evapotranspiration reaches almost 1,200 uh, uh, millimeters. Rainfalls or effective, uh, effective rainfalls are less than uh, reference evapotranspiration, and actually difference or um, water balance is actually quite uh, negative, as you can see 
on the on the year basis but especially it's negative on this actually growing during the, the, the vegetation season from april to from april to november it's uh minus uh, over uh, 500 uh, millimeters in, in, in minus. So, uh, in the main, uh, actually, the new of crop pot, you are, you are able to do different things. Let's go step by step and, we, and, and, and see what is actually needed to obtain certain step level in crop pot menu. Uh, first, you will be able to do, as I said, a uh, calculation of reference evapotranspiration uh, uh, for certain area. That you uh, in, uh, be able to do, so you have to input certain data. Uh, name uh, of your, uh, let's say, uh, metro station, uh, altitude, uh, longitude, uh, latitude, and so on, and so on, and also for how many long long period you want to calculate uh, this data for only one month or 12 months and so on and so on. And of course, uh, software asks you uh, with which parameters you will do that, with average uh, data or with extreme or extreme data, mean and max. So after you enter all that data, average temperature for, for, the, for that period, uh, average humidity uh, in certain month, wind speed, uh, uh, radiation, and so on and so on. Uh, what, what will calculate your evapotranspiration rate uh, in millimeter per day and in total? In, in total, actually, as I said, it's almost hundred and hundred and uh, sorry, thousand and two hundred uh, millimeters, which is quite quite high evapotranspiration rate. Also, I have said that uh, rainfalls are actually the main water inputs at certain at certain system. Sorry. And out of those, uh, out of total precipitation rate, we have to uh, to see actually um, to calculate uh, effective. Uh, precipitation. Uh, crop pot allows, allows to us that we, we can choose certain methodology for, uh, for uh, calculation of effective uh, precipitation. I usually take this one, USDR method, and from the total amount of precipitation uh, about uh, 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 in between of 10 to 20 percent, is actually represent uh, effective rainfall for <coughs> certain area. So, next step that, that we have, have to do related to detection of watermelon uh, crop water requirements, we have to input certain uh, 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 plant data related to watermelon. Uh, for instance, we have to enter uh, 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 certain parameters related to uh, related to vegetation period of, of uh, watermelon. Uh, namely, every crop has uh, divided four uh, uh, developmental stages. And you have to know, uh, depending on genotype, depending on hybrid, on, on so on and so on, how long is, uh, for how long last certain, certain period in days. So, uh, there is initial developing mid-season and so-called late season. Uh, actually, first one uh, lasts from planting to about 10% of ground cover, cover then uh, starts second, which, which lasts to effective full cover, which is actually uh, 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 in very good uh, correlation with initiation of flowering. Then start mid-season or third, uh, third uh, growth season from effective full cover to start maturity. 
and the late season actually the last season uh, which starts from uh, maturity to to the harvest for full, full selling senescence so in 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 my conditions uh, so watermelon vegetation you usually last 100 and then 10 120 days a year <clears throat> from the beginning of uh, transplantation it's it's important to know not from sowing in those conditions uh, watermelons is usually produ produced from seed transplant seedlings <clears throat> and it usually uh, ends uh, 110 112 days after after that you have to enter growth coefficient for particular uh, for particular uh, uh, growth uh, growth uh, <laughs> Uh, stage uh, uh, and also uh, in developmental stage actually uh, uh, software interpolates actually this data and, and, and you need to know only on this uh, for these two uh, stages then we, ho we have a uh, rooting depth of certain crop and the last two uh, parameters actually uh, depletion level and yield response factor related to critical soil moisture when actually uh, starts uh, water stress and yield response factor after that you have to enter the last thing it is it's actually planting date uh, in those conditions it's usually in april uh, from let's say the beginning of april to to the end not later on because uh, uh, harvest season with watermelons uh, stop, stops somewhere uh, in August because of low low market demands. The price is not then low and farmers won't, won't actually uh, harvest their, their watermelons. So, and after that you will get actually uh, calculated uh, crop evapotranspiration of our water, watermelon. You can see actually that watermelon or water irrigation requirements for watermelon is quite high, almost 300 uh, millimeters, or it would be 3,000 of cubic meters of water per hectare, which is which is quite a huge amount of water. But but it is important to know that those irrig irrigation requirements can be substantially reduced because of a certain irrigation method or system that we were talking uh, during our last uh, last uh, talk of course because of certain agricultural technologies and because of certain uh, let's say agrotechnical uh, 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 conditions what it means it means that if you got for instance uh, as, as we do have in, in, in our conditions for instance uh, 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 more efficient irrigation system if you got agricultural technology with plastic mulching with drip irrigation pet irrigation and certain plant density then you can reduce your uh, water crop water requirements by at least one third and even more with plastic black plastic mulch and two drip lines and around six uh, thousand and five hundred plants per per, uh, per hectare you easily can reduce your uh, irrigation requirements by by one one third yeah this is uh, the situation uh, from the practice actually from our uh, field experiments actually where we, we in in which we have tested actually different uh, irrigation systems micro irrigation by micro sprinkler and actually uh, drip irrigation with two uh, two plastic uh, pipelines below the below the the black plastic mulch and actually we have uh, we have uh, also we had uh, some other other uh, observation but actually you can see that uh, uh, how uh, two different irrigation uh, uh, system like is drip 
and sprinkler irrigation also with different water quality for irrigation, how actually can influence influence marketable yield of watermelon in, in, in the uh, conditions of Neretva, Neretva River Valley. Oh, okay, let's go, uh, uh, let's go uh, further. Uh, next possibility that you can, you can do uh, easily in your uh, in, in crop what uh, interface is actually irrigation scheduling. You can model ir irrigation scheduling for our uh, watermelon. But uh, for that purpose, you will need certain pedological uh, characteristic of your field of your field, of your uh, model area. Why? Because certain uh, physical parameters depends, depends on uh, availability of water and depending on uh, particular uh, uh, presence of, uh, of uh, certain uh, um, of certain uh, 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 soil texture from from sand to to clay you have a different uh, you have significant significantly different actually uh, 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 rates of available water in your root system <clears throat> so for that purpose you will need to know actually you will need to know total available soil moisture maximum uh, rain infiltration and does exist some uh, restriction in your soil profile? For instance, you can, sorry, you can have very very shallow uh, shallow uh, soil profile, where you have I don't know deep or shallow groundwater, or you can have some uh, rock rock material, some gravel, and so on, which will restrict uh, 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 development of your roots. And also some other parameters like this, uh, initial soil moisture at the beginning of, of planting day or during the planting day. And after that, uh, you will uh, be able to choose uh, which uh, uh, you will be able to choose option of irrigation timing. So when to start with irrigation? At what moment to start with irrigation? Usually, uh, uh, it's it would be so-called uh, 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 optimal irrigation, uh, but you will see an examples of some other of some other uh, uh, possibilities. But usually, uh, I take this option irrigation at critical depletion. Why? You will see later on. But uh, so at that moment, we will start with irrigation. Any next question is when to stop. With, with irrigation, usually I choose this uh, this uh, uh, option: refill or stop with irrigation when the soil is uh, watered at uh, to fill capacity. To fill capacity. After you choose uh, options, you have to uh, also input the information about water use efficiency of your irrigation system. So, just from last uh, talk. I will just like you remember that actually, depending on irrigation system, uh, actually uh, uh, water use efficiency uh, and up, uh, application uh, efficiency is quite different and can be substantially different in between, even in between of modern irrigation systems. But last uh, time we said actually that it reaches from from forty percent in in some in some uh, surface irrigation systems to, to up to over 95% in, in modern drip irrigation systems. So, yeah, this is also in the picture of some of the most uh, uh, water use efficient and modern irrigation systems, low energized, low, low pressurized irrigation systems with, with very high actually with very high uh, water use e efficiency you can see over over 90 percent on those uh, 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 efficiency of this of this uh, methods and as you see I, I did put for for my 
case, I would put 95% because, as I said, it's watermelon fertilized with, with drip irrigation with high uh, 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 application efficiency. And after that, uh, software will generate you uh, actually irrigation scheduling with, as I said, uh, this uh, 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 important parameter, there is no reduction in, uh, in your, your yield. So with this uh, uh, model uh, uh, irrigation scheduling, you will avoid, let's say, you will avoid negative influence to your uh, to your yield of of uh, watermelon. But another interesting option is actually if you if you choose option eight, which means actually only rain feed, so that you won't uh, 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 irrigate your crop, you can you can get very interesting data. You can get actually what will be the reduction will be the reduction of your yield if you want irrigate the crop. So agroeconomists can use this data, and they are using the, this data for let's say when they are when they are uh, making feasibility study of certain projects, and this is actually very useful that you can obtain how much is reduction of your yield if you wouldn't irrigate your crop under certain certain uh, agroecological conditions. <clears throat> and the last very important parameter, I like to say that actually, uh, I'm in background agronomist, I like to say that actually our story stops with this parameter. After that, when we define a sham water supply, then we uh, actually uh, stop with, with our obligation. And with that parameters, uh, guys from uh, hydrotechnical, uh, from, uh, from hydro, uh, hydro um, uh, hydrotechnicals field, they use that data that they can uh, obtain uh, optimal dimension, hydraulic dimension of certain irrigation system in, in means of, in means of uh, length of pipelines, uh, pipeline di diameter, uh, uh, mm, power of uh, pump station, and so on and so on. So at this point, our, our uh, role of us agronomists is, is done. So let's see actually why is the parameter important in irrigation system planning. What actually it means. Uh, I uh, I will show you just what happens when we, we have only one crop, which is actually watermelon, uh, crop with 100% uh, on our area. So uh, with that shame water uh, supply actually we obtain irrigation requirement for each crop of the shame. Net shame uh, irrigation requirement, irrigation area, and irrigation requirement for the actual actual area. This actually uh, parameters are uh, uh, presented for the whole uh, uh, year, but we are looking actually when this parameter is actually the highest. And based on the highest uh, 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 level, uh, uh, <clears throat> all system will be uh, 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 will optimally be, be uh, uh, projected. They they <clears throat> So, but let's have a look now for the same conditions for uh, for the so-called. Uh, area with uh, about 500 and something uh, hectares, but with a different, different cropping pattern. You can see here in one, uh, in one uh, year, from first to, to, to no, even for two, uh, for two years, uh, how, what is going with cropping pattern? 
So we have here a watermelon, a cabbage, uh, 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 musk melon, uh, mandarin, tomato, and so on and so on, and two two year uh, cropping pattern for 500 for five, 500 and more and more hectare of, of area. You can see here actually calculated maximal hydromobiles or irrigation requirement in normal year and in dry year for the, for the same for the same area. So you can see also now see actually that parameters depending on the working time. Will our will our irrigation system work, work uh, 20 hours a day, 18 hours a day, 16 or 14 hours a day? And you can now easily pick up which which parameter will will use uh, hydro technicians for dimension of irrigation irrigation system. So these parameters is expressed in uh, in liter per, per second per hectare. Our, in Croatia, our irrigation system are mostly dimensions on, let's say, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 and something uh, liter per, sec per second per hectare. And just for few uh, things, what would be uh, pros and cons of this approach, modeling approach? You can see actually that it's highly dependent on quality of agroecological input data. As uh, actually there is one, there is one uh, sentence that you can use actually in any kind of modeling: garbage in, garbage out. If your data for modeling are good, you will get good output results. If you put garbage data in your model, you, you won't get good results. Also, it's actually a desirable practice of experience uh, for, as I said, certain cultivars, uh, certain hybrids, uh, certain technologies. Here, you, you saw uh, growing on plastic mulch. In some other conditions, it might be maybe I don't know, without plastic mulch, which, which will increase uh, actually what, what crop water requirements, and so on and so on. And unfortunately, there is no data for many crops. There is no data for many crops. For instance, crop coefficient for, I don't know, avocado, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or, okay, I didn't maybe pick up the, the, the right crop, but you can't actually find uh, Many times I, I was in trouble because didn't find uh, find uh, 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 certain data. So I I did discuss that problem with my colleagues, with with guys from from uh, from uh, breeding programs and so on and so on to to overcome that that problem problem. But what also we can see that approach is very quick. You you can obtain very. Um, Quickly result, it's relatively cheap. Most of those programs, and this crop what is also free of charge. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, in comparison to, to some uh, direct measurement methods, this approach is cheap. Yes, uh, and finally, the use of no adequate method or no approach appropriately used for estimation of, uh, of certain parameters may result in over or under dimensioning of particular irrigation system, as I said. Because based on this parameter, uh, hydrotechnician will, will make dimensioning of all irrigation system. This is our crucial role. Two, as agronomists to ensure optimal uh, 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 hydro model for irrigation. Yeah, because in other case you, you might be in trouble and uh, irrigation system can be over or under uh, uh, dimensed uh, and also can induce difficulties, uh, different difficulties in irrigation system management. Actually, you can create 
non-efficient system, let's say, non-efficient system. And finally, because I thank to you for your attention, I would just like to say that actually this talk was uh, written the uh, written the uh, uh, policy project by uh, led by by Christian Merino Grgicevic, and I'm very proud that I'm part of that project. And thank you for your invitation to to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gabriel, for, <coughs> sorry. Thank you, Gabriel, for uh, your interesting presentation. Uh, we have time for some questions. From the, from yeah. <coughs> so when you you were saying that you had uh, some difficulty on finding the yeah. crop coefficient. Uh, was there any uh, any uh, particular situation where you you didn't actually find it, and yeah, you had to that's right. That's uh, right. Probably test it by yourself, or or calibrate it. You can't do because, unfortunately, in Croatia we don't have a lismetric station. As and as I said in my presentation, to obtain uh, uh, the most uh, accurate crop coefficient data, you would need to conduct that measurement at lismetric station. For certain crop, but unfortunately, Croatia, as many others countries, don't have such uh, such uh, 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 facilities. So it's very common to to overtake data, not only related to crop coefficient, but and also to other to other data like its yield response factor and so on and so on. So, but I just w wanted to stress out that actually that's the most critical point yeah, exactly. that you have to to very well, uh, know everything about the crop that you are doing modeling. Everything about uh, as much as more, it, it, it will be better. Yeah. Just one example for corn, where you have early growing, uh, late growing uh, uh, sweet corn, and so on and so on. And for also uh, corn for for forage production, yeah, you have to be very careful with handling the data from. From other sources, yeah. Yeah, and, and have you looked in the FAO uh, data? Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They also Mostly. have uh, some uh, crop coefficients. Uh, yeah, probably yeah. not adjusted to every every location. Yeah, there is lots of FAO data in in their built-ins, in their yeah publications. Yeah, I mostly overtake uh, data from FAO from publications. That's right. That's right. It's good source. Yeah. Other question? Marcel? Um, well, you, you mentioned that this method is uh, based on the Paul Pelman Montilli question yeah, yeah. and the um, crop coefficient. And, and you mentioned, which is true for every modeler, that uh, if you put garbage in, yeah, 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 yeah. Up. But the models are more sensitive to some garbage. So, in your experience, uh, which parameters are more? Ah. Yeah, nice. relevant in terms of yes. you know you, you work with climate data for two years. That's right, exactly. Um, exactly. But you know, uh, I, I guess my, my question is about also resolution when you go to a specific crop. So where do you find that you need to be, be more careful with your data in the crop coefficient or in the climate data? And and both, I would say on both. Yeah, that's actually a good point because uh, when we are talking about the uh, meteorological data. You you see this example was ba based on relatively uh, older period uh, from uh, from 1981st to 2005. I would say that if I would go now uh, in irrigation planning on that uh, on that area, that this data wouldn't be good. So I would probably take the more, more re recent data, for instance, from 2017, 16, and in last 25, 30 years. Okay, but also it's you have to be careful because during the last few years, where where where, where really really uh, 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 I would say uh, out of out of average, let's say annual average uh, 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 fluctuations. So it's really 
hard to, 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 to say, but in usually I would take uh, the most recent data up to last 30 years uh, in regards to, to your question regards to metrological data. In regards to, to crop data, actually uh, when I'm doing uh, that for irrigation planning of particular system, I usually uh, discuss a lot of, of with, with other uh, with other guys from I don't know from general crop production from from if if, if there is some uh, crop uh, from from I don't know which is fruit then I talk a lot with with uh, guys from from uh, uh, viticulture on, on, on from uh, fruticulture and so on and so on so. It has to be very, very careful person in, in doing doing that, yeah. Because apple, for instance, apple is also apple, but you you, you have I don't know, one one start with season, uh, with with with, uh, with in initial initial uh, initial uh, uh, stage starts I don't know, on twentieth of May and with and ends maybe in 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 August. And another variety ends maybe in uh, October or September. So you, you have to be very careful how to split uh, stages and uh, to give uh, each stage appropriate crop coefficient data. Yeah. It's, it's quite, uh, I mean, difficult to explain everything in, in such short time, but yeah, on every stage, Step you have to be very, very careful, I would say. And of course, the as I said, uh, when we came to the final step to definition of uh, shared water supply and uh, hydro model, uh, you have to be very, very careful and suggest to people who. Uh, who will go further with, with calculation? Uh, which hydro model take? Uh, for instance, uh, this uh, hydro model means that your irrigation system will work 18 hours a day. This means 20 hours a day. You have to know is that maybe possible in the practice or it's not? Sometimes it's not possible. Why? Because for instance, these days along Croatia, there are heats, drives, and so on and so on. You can't operate with irrigation on 40 degrees. Okay, you have to be careful and go maybe with 16 hours a day or even less 14 hours a day. Or if you got viticulture irrigation, then you can calculate easily with even higher uh, irrigation. Uh, 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 mm, for instance, because uh, Deep irrigation won't influence, I don't know, crop canopy and so on and so on. Yeah, it's it's also very important yeah, to, to discuss every step with with other with other guys, with other experts. Yeah. <clears throat> Question? Oh, well, I have a, a question. Uh, what is a normal year? Ah, yeah. Year. It's uh, a yeah. uh, nice mm -hmm. great. This, uh, this is normal. Year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, big, big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, normal year. We could we could talk few hours a day more about it, but okay. Um, normal year. Okay. okay. So, this uh, this uh, brief short expression of water balance is based on average uh, climatic data average climatic data so it means that in the period uh, from 1981 in january was in average 37 uh, sorry uh, rainfalls were 109 uh, millimeters mm. and in average uh, Total precipitation were uh, 1,213 uh, millimeters. In dry year, there is methodology how to, uh, from uh, input data, how to determine uh, dry year. Uh, actually, probability of uh, rainfalls was set 
to 25%. And then you obtain dry air. Also, you can do for wet air. And probability of rain is over 75% and so on. So, but this is this is for normal, let's say, year, average year. But in dry year, probability of your rainfalls can be set on 25% or, or even less. Yeah. And then you will get dry year, which will increase in dry year. You will get even more crop water requirements and so on and so on. And so on. Okay. Usually, uh, hydro technicians, uh, hydro Engineer, engineers from uh, uh, hydrotechnics, they like to have uh, different scenarios for normal, wet, and dry air that they can uh, choose optimal hydro model. They say, if I take one liter a second per hectare, my pipeline will have to be 50 maybe. Uh, centimeters in diameter. If I take 0 0.8 uh, liter per second per hectare, my pipeline diameter might be maybe 10% lower, which will influence uh, pump station capacity, strength, and so on and so on. So on. It actually, which will influence uh, visibility of this mitigation project. So they like to have as much as more scenarios for normal wet and dry air. Yeah. Um, well, uh, last.